first question I have to ask you, things yes. ended on a bit of a tense note between you and Gino in this upcoming episode. What have you been thinking while you're watching the season back? Uh, you know, it's very hard for me to, to watch the scenes again, because it's like going through those feelings and emotions. Um, it's, it's something so tangible at the moment, you know, you were experiencing that. And sometimes, you know, it allows me a lot of self-reflection, like, okay, I, I shouldn't have said that, or I should have said things differently but I try not to be so hard on myself because it's like they're recording you as life is happening and at the heat of the emotions you're just I'm just being human and I can just you know pretend to be someone that I'm not I honestly most of the time forget that I'm being filmed and I'm just being myself and I exploded on Gino because I was actually very mad. I was so angry uh, at him. And, you know, it's it's just me being myself. And we saw that you and Gino, you get kind of get into it in this upcoming episode about him not filing all the paperwork for you. Um, what was going through your mind when you were finding that out? I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It was very shocking for me um, because he told me in multiple locations that he had done it and then he was breaking the news to me uh and that is lying to me you don't play with that because we are talking about like i'm putting my life on hold uh it's been very difficult for me to go through all this immigration process for the very first time in my life and i i couldn't believe like my husband the person that i love and trusted the most was just breaking my heart in that way because he knows what it means for me like the more you take to apply for those papers you know the more it's gonna take uh, because that's how immigration process work and I know it is not in his hands like you know to determine how long it's gonna take but the applying part it goes on him I also have to say you had some iconic lines this season. There was one moment that went viral when you said no one could would control you except for your dog. No greater on earth except for my dog is ever gonna control me. What was your reaction when you saw that? Like everyone was loving that online. I know. I couldn't believe how many uh, views that click had uh people were like you know using it and social media using my voice over and over i i just said things that they they just come through my mind and i i have no filters and that's generally the way i feel you know like no one can control me except for my dog because i adore him so much and uh, i thought honestly like after i said that like you know, people will, will be mad at me because I was saying that to my husband, right? But I don't know, people took it in a fun way. And a lot of pet owners identify with me. So that it's very relatable yeah. if you own a dog. I understood what you were saying there. Yeah, yeah. So that makes me feel like a little bit, you know, less crazy because uh, I, I hear to myself when I thought I was like, Oh my gosh, why did I say that? But that's honestly the way I feel to work Coco, you know? He's like a baby. I love him. And the thing is that so far, Coco is the only family member that I was able to brought to the United States with me. And that dog has been with me from day to night during this journey. And he means the word to me. And for the first time ever, the happily ever after couples will spend this tell-all living together under one roof. Wow. We have a tell-all coming up. Um, it looks like it's going to be insane. What was your reaction when you found out that all the couples were going to be living in a house together? I've been in many tell so far, you know, uh, and this is something that I can tell the audience and 90 day fiance fans, something that they have never seen before. Okay, that was so crazy. When I heard the news, I honestly thought they were joking. I was like, there is no way. You, you know who we are, right? All these people with different personalities and all over the top, we're gonna be living together. That's not gonna work. Uh, but, you know, it was as, a very unique experience. I had so much fun, so much drama. I ended up 
exhausted. It was so draining, but at the same time, it is a very unique experience. Jasmine, how often have you caught Gino watching porn? More often than I want. Several, no way. You don't want to know what the last discover was. But I'm not addicted to it. I don't Gino, watch it a lot. I want you or to admit like what videos were you looking for? And the trailer for the tell all, it shows you confronting Gino about what you describe as his addiction to adult content. Have you two been able to resolve this issue? Uh, well, it's it's something that, you know, uh, it was not easy for me to expose to the public eye, but this is what this reality is about. It's about a real life. And like people have followed my journey with Gino since we met for the first time. We met on TV, you know, like they were filming it. So I, I strongly believe that the, the, the audience deserve to know, you know, why we're having so many issues. And this is one of the root cause of the many problems that we have had. And that's why I, I believe it was important for me to let everybody know, like, listen, this is a real deal and that's what's happening. And I made sure that I was 100% sure that it was an actual problem before letting people know, you know. Uh, but it's something that needs to be worked on. Uh, it's, it's a real issue that we have as a couple and hopefully we will get through it. We, we still are in the process. Everyone is like, poor Gino, he cannot have sex with you because you're such a terrible person. Then let me walk away. Why can you not f her? You go through that every day and let's see if you say that f again. You brought up your intimacy issues with Gino. It's something that you've talked about um, this season. Uh, what was it like discussing that like in the tell-all and with the other couples around? So at the beginning, I was very, um, you know, nervous of mm -hmm like speaking about these things but the fact that the other couples were very transparent and honest as well about their own issues and everybody was being not just judgmental they were some people were but for the most part some others were trying to to understand listening to understand not to judge me and I wanted to give them back the same energy you know like we are here because we are all married we're trying to fight for our marriages we're trying to find happiness and have a healthy relationship but the truth is that we're experiencing a lot of problems so i felt confident to bring it up to the table and um having you know um husbands like i can mention uh, kobe you know he is like truly amazing and and i, I wanted just to see that male perspective Besides just the, the wife, I, I wanted to hear from them what I could do as a wife. I needed some genuine advice. So even though some people judge me and some people disagree, I got a lot of support. There's obviously a lot of big personalities in one house for the tell-all. Um, were there any disagreements within the house that you can tease maybe with you and other couples or you and any other individuals? <laughs> Babe, there were disagreements from beginning to end, okay? At the beginning, we were all like, yes, we are brothers and sisters. We love each other. And I'm quite sure at the end, you know, but there were disagreements, so much fighting uh, between, the, among the couples, then among the individuals fighting, because as you said, like, there are people with very strong personality, including myself, and I'm not a started but if you come to me with disrespect and being judgmental baby I'm gonna equal your energy so that was like you know like what mainly happened there, there was like a lot of explosion of emotions and anger and frustration because when you are in the hot state you know um you, you feel attacked in a certain way so you attack back and then when it was your turn to judge other, you were like, okay, so what were you saying about me, bitch? Now I said it on my face. And you know, th there was a lot of fighting, uh, but also happy and funny moments. So we have a lot of fun as well. It was like, like, I don't know, like a vacation with family members that you haven't seen in a long time. So it was, it was, you know, very interesting. 
You called me a bottom feeder. You don't even own what you said to me. You didn't I am comments. looking at you telling you I don't like you. It looked like Big Ed and Lauren were getting into an argument. Were there any arguments that surprised you or shocked you? In like front that? of me, I was getting glam. You know, there, there were so many, like few moments of peace and quiet because after dealing with the tello filming the whole freaking day the last thing you want to do is to see these people again and the yelling and the screaming and the arguing and back to the house you know everybody crazy and then like the very few minutes that i have peace was when i was getting glam so lauren is in the room getting glam as well and then ed shows up and they start i arguing and i was in the middle just sipping my coffee and trying to to look beautiful for the cameras. And that was so like, oh my gosh, this is like, you know, like, I don't know, being in a teenager um, age because they, they were so childish, like back and forth, like insulting each other. I didn't want to take sides because at that moment, all I wanted was peace. But I was like, oh my gosh, could you please just stop? We haven't even started the day and these two are already fighting. So one thing is for certain, they really dislike each other, okay? Lauren doesn't like uh, Ed, Ed doesn't like Lauren. They they have a beef, but I try just to stay away from it. To starting fresh. Hearing they're laughing with guys, girls, there is a problem here! And you are the problem! Michael is finally in the States um, in person at the tell all. Uh, what was your reaction to having him there in real life? I think that Michael is one of the, you know, um, people from the show that have taken the, the longest for waiting, you know, for um, the visa to come to the United States. So a part of me was very happy to see him getting to know him for the first time and you know he traveled all the way from africa that's so freaking far I've, I've never been in africa but i can only imagine he finally here in the united states but at the same time i don't want to spoil anything for you as much as i wanted to be nice because i'm very friendly and talkative i was scared to talk to him because angela was around and I don't know, she's kind of a jealous person. And I get it because I'm also jealous. But she was always like supervising and monitoring who's talking, what you're saying. So I couldn't talk to him that much as I wanted to just because I was generally scared of Angela. Okay, that is my confession. I don't want to have any problems with her. So I, I try not to be too friendly. Oh my God, Michael, in the flesh. Angela, would you like to tell Michael who you hired? I hired a private investigator. Oh, we do have him here with us today to share what he has found. <gasps> there was also a moment in the tell-all when they revealed that there's going to be this private investigator that's coming in to spill all of the secrets of Michael. Um, without giving away any spoilers, what was your reaction when all of that was going down? I couldn't believe it. You know, like a private investigator should be like the biggest red flag in a relationship. And that coming from me tells you a lot. Okay, so the moment you feel like you have to hire a private investigator on your partner, like, you know, it doesn't even matter what the private investigator uh, finds out. Just the fact that you have to do that just prove how damaged a relationship might be and there is no trust. So I couldn't believe it. I completely disagree with, with the idea of a private investigator. At the same time, just being neutral, I understand the other part of hiding it, but this is a person that you went through a whole immigration process, you brought to America, and if you find out something, what you're gonna do? So I I was like in disbelief. And if Gino ever hires a private investigator on me, he's gonna be in big trouble. <laughs> oh my gosh, that would be that would be dramatic. Um yes. now I know we talked a bit about the drama that's gonna unfold on the tell all, but were there any couples or any of the ladies that you formed a friendship with while in the house? Oh, yes. I marry uh, Emily. You know, she is my tell-all wife. She was, she was pregnant at the time when we were filming. 
and I, I adore her. She's the sweetest person ever. Uh, she was so protective of, of me. And even though I'm older, obviously, than her, she was like being a mom to me. She was always checking on me every day. And I was like, you know, I, I never experienced something like this. Like, she's the sweetest person because she's pregnant. She's the one going through all these hormonal changes, baking a whole human being. And we should be the ones looking after you. And she was the one always checking on me at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day. And having just her there for me, it meant a lot. And I can tell you that Emily is going to be my friend for a lifetime. I just love her. I will give her one of my kidneys if she needed it. Okay. That's how much I love her. She seems really sweet. I'm glad to hear that there was some positivity that came out of the, the Yeah, talk. not everybody was like that. Okay. And I can tell you that there are some people that I wouldn't call enemies, but after living with them, they are not my friends either. And I hope to never see them again. Can you name any names or do we have to tune in? Yeah, you have to tune in to see, because for me to say that I'm a very friendly person, okay? I'm a girl's girl, I'm, you know, with the boys, I'm always very respectful and all that, but there are some people that, I don't know, uh, they haven't learned anything from, from life, so um uh, they're just uh people that i i will be so happy to never see again or never to have to do anything with them because uh you know it's just like i i didn't have chemistry with them i didn't like their personality and they were very rude and mean uh, not just to me but some of the cast members so you have to stay tuned to see who i'm talking about so after the tell -all, i will reveal the names you know i will reveal the names yes i made friendships but i also you know have some people on, on my blacklist like you know these people i don't want them close to me well i will be tuning in i can't wait to see what happens um Jumping back to you and Gino. Now, I know we talked a bit about how things were a bit tense with you on the last upcoming episode. Um, can you talk a bit about what it is about Gino that keeps drawing you back to him? Because I feel like even though um, you guys sometimes get into arguments, it feels like you're still always pulled back together. Yes. Um, the reason why that happens is because I do love Gino. Um, and you know, when, when there is no love, I do believe that there is nothing to, to fight for. And uh, I have always believed in my heart because of the love that I have for him, that given the right tools, we could, you know, have a healthy relationship because the problem has never been the lack of love. We are truly in love with each other. The problem is like communication. Uh, we don't know how to express our feelings without hurting each other. And that's something that keeps going in circles. We we feel like we're trying. We feel that both we are both giving 100%, but we always go to the starting point of hurting each other, either with words or with actions. But the reason why we always go back together is because we are in love we have a history together we've been together for four years you know and yes you know it's something that to me and in my heart is something worth fighting for i also have to ask because this season you were not the biggest fan of michigan has it grown on you <laughs> no it hasn't <laughs> that's not gonna happen you know, it's just like, uh, it's it's like a hate-love relationship. It's so weird because I don't like people talking bad things about Michigan. I'm like, shut up, you know? It's not that bad. But honestly, it, it's funny because uh, in my heart, I know that here it's, it's, it's very difficult for me to live. But there are things that I have learned over time to love about Michigan. And it's like the peace and quiet. Because when I travel to other states, let's let's say New York or something, I'm always like bitching. Like, oh, look at all this traffic. In Michigan, we never had this problem. Why everyone is in a rush? You say good morning and people don't answer back. In Michigan, everybody says hi to you. You know, and I'm like, am I starting to love Michigan? I don't know. It's like a love-hate relationship. It's hard to explain. But if there is something that I wouldn't change 
in the world is Michiganders. They are very kind. I have felt nothing but welcome in this state. And they are very, very funny and sweet. And that's good enough for me to to like Michigan, the Mitten State. It's just, you know, the weather can be, it can affect your mood. You know, I know I'm from a cold state, so I get it. Like when you were describing how cold Michigan was, I was like, I understand what you're saying here. Exactly. Oh. Maybe I'm talking nicely about Michigan because it hasn't been cold in a while. But as soon as it starts getting cold, it's like, please get me out of here. No, I get it. I get it. Now, can yeah. you describe the tell-all in three words? Uh, in three words, hell, nightmare, <laughs> and chaotic. I, I mean, even though I don't love that for you, I love it for me as a viewer. I will, I'm excited to see the drama unfold. Um, and then the last thing I was going to say was congrats on winning your title in the pageant. Um, do you want to continue being in pageants? And what did you learn from your experience? Um, well, the most valuable experience with this beauty pageant was creating a community for me here in the United States. As an immigrant, you know, I feel like I was a starting from scratch, having to, to meet new people, make new friends. And I found sisterhood. Most of the beauty queens and contestants that participated in the beauty pageant are still to the day my friend. And that was, you know, better than winning any crown because these women are so supportive that we each other try to, you know, we try to fix each other's crown and I can rely on them. And that is something very valuable. Would I want to participate in another beauty pageant? Why not? I, I would love to, um, but something, you know, like bigger, maybe Miss Universe. <laughs> Because now you see that in, in Miss Universe, it is okay if you have children, it doesn't matter your age. So I'm like, you know what now? The only thing that will be problematic for me would be, am I gonna represent the United States or Panama? Am I gonna be Miss Universe Panama or Miss Universe the United States? Maybe I could do both and be the first person to represent two countries. I don't know. 